Hello lovelies and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke and today I cannot wait to bring you the 90s girl tumbler tutorial. This is inspired from everything wonderfully 90s from Saved by the Bell to Full House. So without any hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. I started with a fully prepped and sanded um, 24 ounce hydro fit from Eat Steel Magnolia. Then um, I took it outside and I did an ombre with soft pink and prickly pear from Rosolium's 2X primer and spray paint. Let that dry for a good probably 20, 45 minutes just because I had some different things going on. And then I went into um, the epoxy method for applying my ombre of the two glitters. So I love these two colors. Um, granted, the paint colors are a little on the pinker side and the glitters that were Applying are more on the coral side, but I really liked how they interplayed with each other and brought the um, glitter really to life. So, you guys have seen me do the epoxy method a bunch on my tutorials, but what I'm making sure to do is apply a very, very thin layer of the epoxy just to act as a adhesive for um, the glitter. And I'm using barely any. I want to say for this cup, I use less than one milliliter because I'm using a pretty fine cut of glitter. If you had a chunkier glitter, then I would definitely say go in and add just a tiny, tiny bit more. But um, I use pretty, pretty, like barely any. The first color of glitter I'm using here is actually from the Inspired Angel. It's called Peach Fuzz and it's that peachy, really awesome coral color. Um, fine cut that you can see is just completely brought to life underneath that prickly pear spray paint. So I'm taking my time because I am ombre um, this cup and I'm focusing on that rim um, with the glitter. So as I'm pouring the glitter, I'm really starting at the rim, like the base of the cup, and I'm using the angle of the cup to dictate how far that glitter comes down. So if I know I need the glitter to go down a little bit further, I will steepen the angle. If I know I just want to keep it pretty um, close to where I'm um, not dumping, but sprinkling the glitter, then I will flatten the cup to where it's not as um, high of an incline. The second glitter I'm using here is again from the Inspired Angels, and this is called Sherbert. I love this glitter. Um, I can't get over it. When I bought it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then when I actually put it on this cup, I'm like, dang, this stuff is awesome. So just came in. And again, um, since this is the lighter of the colors, you'll see that I am sprinkling it more freely over um, the cup to get that coverage, but also to kind of come over and um, further blend the glitter with that peach fuzz color. So I did start at the beginning using the angle of the cup to get that ombre, but then I did come back and then glitter um, over the peach fuzz. Then to get an even better blend, I came in with the peach fuzz again and went over that area that I had just covered with the Sherbert glitter. So literally with the ombres to get a really good ombre, just go back and forth with your glitter colors, whether you're doing two, whether you're doing six, whatever it is, and make sure that you're spending the time to get the um, the coverage and the blend that you want. Nobody's going to judge you <laughs> if you have to do it multiple times, but um, it's funny, like my husband pushed me, he goes, yeah, I don't think you're quite happy with that ombre, so I went ahead and did it at just one more time, and I have to say that I am super impressed with this ombre. So don't be afraid to go back and forth to get the blends that you're really going for. Once I was happy with the ombre, I mixed up 25 ml of a little extra ink epoxy and applied it to the cup. Now, this is just probably, I would say five more ml than I would typically do on a cup this size, but I wanted to make sure I got good coverage and only needed one coat to get a perfectly smooth surface for this next step, which it worked out because the cup did not need any sanding and I was able to move into this next step. So. As we are talking about the next step, what I did is I grabbed some patina paints or patina inks from Ranger. I'll link them below and I got a super cheap just foam brush. You can get them anywhere. And I just applied a dot of the patina inks to the cup um, at the very rim over the top of that sherbet color. 
I only applied enough to where I got good coverage, I got a great pop of color, but it was also still translucent enough to where you could see the glitter underneath. You can absolutely apply more if you want more opaque coverage. I just liked um, the translucent effects and being able to see the beautiful glitter that we had just applied. So I started with the coral color and then I moved into more of almost like a taupe color. Um, it was it was beautiful in the bottle, but it just wasn't giving me the coverage that I wanted for this pop of color. So I grabbed a blue that's called, um, I believe it's blue fluorite. Um, I'll have the specific color linked below, but I liked that it was blue with a pop of teal and that color really mixed well with the other coral colors that we have going on. The patina inks dry super quickly, so I think I maybe waited about five minutes, and then I poured a little bit of light yellow paint by Craftsman into a palette um, and grabbed myself a mechanical pencil. You're like, oh really, a mechanical pencil, a new tool for tumblers. But it works perfect for applying the dot pattern that I wanted over the top of the coral patina inks that I had used. So. I just did a couple lines of the yellow dots over the top to give me some depth to the different pieces and different techniques that we're using here. And I really like how the yellow and the coral played together. So I just applied a couple of lines here. Then after I was happy with like the yellow dots, I moved into more of a, I wanna say kind of like a taupey color. It's actually called Coral from Craftsmart. To me, it is not close to a coral color. Um, maybe I have a different view of coral, but I poured it into the palette again and I started applying more dots um, at the bottom of the cup in a different pattern that coincided with the yellow dots above, but also allowed for a little more movement um, and a little difference between the two dots that were being applied. Once I was happy with the dot placement, um, I let that paint dry for probably, I'd say, a good 10, 15 minutes. And then I poured another couple of paints onto my palette. This time it was called Ocean Breeze from Craftsmart, same line of paints. And then also something that was called, or a blue color that was called Pale Blue. And then I got my ball tool. And um, if you watched any of my other tutorials, um, especially the Mojave Desert one, I've used the ball tool before. I'll link it below, but I think these are truly underestimated tools for when we're creating tumblers. But I got a little bit of the, um, the more tail, like the turquoise teal color, which is called Ocean Breeze. And I went over the coral color paint and also uh, the blue fluorite um, color and just added some little whimsical dots over the top. I think it was pretty representative of the 90s and all the different layers of colors and textures. Um, so I really like the dots. Then after I was done with this, I cleaned off my ball tool and then I added the pale blue over the top of that coral patina paint and then also the light yellow paint here. I let the dots dry for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then I grabbed my handy dandy glue stick and just every which way applied a strip of glue. Um, here you can just see I wanted to go over the dots and the patina paint, but also like alongside of it to give it some dimension um, And then I grabbed some rose gold flakes. These are also from the inspire angel I will link them below and just applied the flakes over the top of the glue um, I Wanted more of a distressed look and I'll show you some close-up pictures later but um, just literally just every place that you liked it and you can see it here applied a little bit of glue and then came over the top with those rose gold or copper flakes i think this step really added some great detail to the cup and i think it also really complemented the different peaches and coral colors that we have going on with the cup but then also like the blues and the teals that we had also chosen I let the flakes, the dots, all the patina paint dry for probably about a good hour to two hours. Then, to the magic of video editing, I rolled the cup over and we had another Blake slate. 
So everything I'm doing here I showed you previously, but I did want to show you how I piled on the different colors just so you can see it for reference. But here I chose another patina paint. This one is called Purple Sapphire and it's actually beautiful. I was a little bit hesitant to use a purple with a coral, but I think it really played well, um, especially over the peach fuzz glitter. So just literally applying a little dot of it and I moved the purple backwards, so that's why you can't see it here. And then I picked another blue. I end up really not liking this blue. It's just too translucent. It's not giving me that pop of color I really wanted in this placement. So I ended up grabbing a different um, patina paint. This, the one I grab is actually beautiful and it's called turquoise. And I love how it played well with the purple and then all the other colors that we have going on in the color. So again, it was a little hard to get open, just applied a tiny little dot and you can see the coverage that I was able to get with that just tiny, tiny bit of ink. I let the patina inks dry, which is probably unnecessary, and then I moved into my mechanical pencil dots and the ball tool dots. I switched up the paint color, so if it was a mechanical pencil paint before, it became a ball tool point and vice versa. I just created some random designs. I'd love to see what you guys came up with, um, but then I just made sure that I liked the flow and the overall design. One thing I didn't picture here is that after the acrylic paints were dry, I did add more flakes. Since I had already shown it, I didn't think it was necessary to show it again, but I just chose some random spots on the cup that I thought were pretty and applied the foil in a design that I thought really added and complemented to the other design elements we had going on. Water is the inspiration behind this cup. This is actually her swim team water bottle that she wants to take, and she is obsessed with everything 90s. She loves Lisa Frank, but not necessarily the colors, or so she tells me. Um, she loves Full House and just everything 90s. So this is her design. Um, but what I did is I cut her name out with um, all Cricut brand vinyl products. Um, the blue is a light blue glitter vinyl and then the rose gold is just like a foil style vinyl and I will link those below uh, but she wanted it at a slight point she's actually standing behind me to tell me where she wants the placement um, and I just applied it from the center out so that I wouldn't have any bubbles I then moved the cup over to the turner and I really can't emphasize this step enough but I applied quick coat to the entire tumbler now, it doesn't have to be quick coat, it could be a spray, a clear spray sealer, it could be polyurethane, but it's really important because we have the layered vinyl in all of the different acrylic paints and the copper flakes to seal everything into place. Um, I just use quick coat because it's what I have on hand. Poly works great as well, but I took my time making sure that everything was well encoded, I was happy with the placement, and then I let that dry for about 45 minutes before I moved in to epoxy. I mixed up 20 mls of my favorite epoxy. It's called a little extra ink and if you guys would like to try it, I have a $5 off coupon down in the description and they also offer free samples um, if you just want to give it a shot. I absolutely love this epoxy. It always has the best shine and it gives me a really nice coat um, that I wasn't always able to achieve with other epoxy brands. So came in, made sure to get the rim and then also the bottom waited about five minutes, and then came in and hit it with the torch. I wanted to make sure to torch the cup because I was using that foil vinyl, and that really has a good um, good likelihood of showing any micro bubbles that might have occurred. After I torched, I grabbed Tiny Dancer from Peachy Olive Glitters and just sprinkled it here and there around the design. So I really wanted to focus on the different foil areas on the cup because I thought it was just like a nice little detail um, to bring attention to the different design elements. And the color of Tiny Dancer really played well with the other elements of the cup. So came in, just sprinkled Tiny Dancer here and there, and I think it was the best decision ever. I let it rotate probably about five minutes and then I came in with a gloved finger and just pushed down any chunky pieces that might be sticking up. I did this just so we would have less of a need for two more layers of epoxy and in doing so it only actually required me to come in with a second layer of 20 mls and look what we got. The second layer coated it so nicely, it's such a beautiful cup, pictures do not do it justice. 
Um, I actually had a really hard time photographing this one. Um, but I cannot wait to see if you guys use these techniques to bring your own cups to life and tag me in all of them. I would love to see them. If you liked this tutorial, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with any of our news or future items, ring the bell and you'll get notifications. Again, thank you so much for your time. It means just the absolute world. And I love you guys. Bye.